Coming up next on Hands-On Windows, I'm going to take a look at Microsoft Edge and how you should set it up, whether you intend to use the browser or not. And yes, it's important to set this thing up correctly if you're not going to use it. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. And this week, we're going to take a look at correctly configuring and setting up Microsoft Edge. And that's true whether you're going to use the browser or not. Um, we almost certainly discussed this topic a long time ago, possibly as long as 70 episodes or so ago. Um, I don't remember exactly, but um, I'm always updating uh, my Windows 11 field guide uh, because Microsoft keeps updating Windows 11. The book is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But... Um, despite all the changes in Windows itself, if there's anything that changes more than Windows 11, it's Microsoft Edge, the web browser that's included with Windows 11. And that's because this thing, like most web browsers, is on a four-week release schedule, uh, eight weeks if you're a business, but four weeks for most of us. And every version has new features. Uh, not all of them are major or worth discussing, uh, but some are. And uh, it's been a while, right, since we've discussed this. So I thought that we'd do a couple of episodes of Microsoft Edge and we should start at the beginning, which is how to correctly set this thing up. Um, this particular computer, I've already configured Microsoft Edge, but um, I took screenshots of what that process looks like. And I want to compare it to what it looked like after the fact to go back and make those configuration changes. So if you made a mistake or a couple of mistakes while setting up Edge, um, you can correct any of that at any time. So that's actually kind of nice. At least you can fix any problems, right? So the initial screen for setting up Microsoft Edge has looked like this for quite a while. Um, fairly recently, they changed it. So it changed to this screen. Now, I, these look almost identical. Don't worry about the size of the image on the right there, but if you, as I go back and forth, you can see they've added this checkbox. Um, so the top bit is unchanged and is probably desirable to most people. If you're going to use Microsoft Edge and you're signing in with a Microsoft account or a Microsoft Worker School account, you're going to want it to sync all of your browser settings to the cloud, to your account, and then when you uh, install Microsoft Edge or use it on another device, another PC, another phone, whatever it might be, those things sync back and forth. This is a feature all browsers have in some capacity. It's a good one. It's fine. You could click manage and go in there and decide exactly what to sync, but you probably don't want to do that. If you do want to do that, by the way, <laughs> I should say, you can go into settings and uh, go into profiles here and go into sync. And this will show you all of the types of data that can sync through your Microsoft account. So you can control it from here. Uh, after the fact, you don't have to get that right during setup, but uh, that's one of the, that's a pretty basic capability. I think most people are going to want that to happen. This new feature is troubling, though. <laughs> it's enabled by default. It says bring over your data from other browsers regularly. You can manage your preferences anytime in settings. Um, that first sentence is inaccurate and that second sentence doesn't help because it doesn't tell you where to go, right? So it's kind of a strange thing. Like, what is this? Um, the way, uh, first of all, it, to my knowledge, to my experience, it actually does not work with any other browsers. It only works with micro, uh, sorry, with Google Chrome. Regularly is an interesting term that suggests it's kind of sitting there doing it in the background a lot. That's not what's happening. Uh, the way this works is every time you run Microsoft Edge, every time it comes up fresh, it will do a sync then with your Chrome data if you allow it to do this. Um, I, <laughs> whether or not this is a uh, good idea is open to interpretation, I guess. But um, I don't, I don't think this is necessarily such a great idea. Um, if you want to turn this off, you can. Um, again, in in settings. Um, in this case, uh, it's actually best just to. Um, Probably search, I would say. Uh, it's kind of hard to find. Uh, it's in, it is in sync. No, it is not in sync. I'm sorry. It is in, where is it in? Import browser data. There it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Import browser data, which is in profile. Here we go. Import browser data, excuse me. Um, it's kind of sandwiched between these two options. These other things were here before. I have always have a hard time finding this one. It's kind of strange. Um, because you can come in here and import data at any time from other browsers. We're going to look at that in one second. But um, 
here it says something different. It says import browsing data at each browser launch. And it's attached to Chrome, which is kind of interesting. This particular computer um, actually probably has multiple browsers on it, but I've just never seen it attached with any other browser. And it, it, when you go into this, it says explicitly import browser data from Google Chrome on each launch. I've disabled it. I, I'm having a hard time understanding why anyone <laughs> wanted to do this, but uh, it's checked off by default. So my recommendation is uh, turn that off. Um, as far as the rest of this goes, um, the rest of the, like I said, the rest of that works the same. Um, second screen is the same as before. This hasn't changed. You can sign into Google from here. You don't have to install Chrome. It will sync up to your uh, Chrome account or your Google account and suck in your data if you want to use Microsoft Edge with that data. That's fine. If you want to do that, uh, the Manage button will go to the subset screen where you can choose which data to import. Um, that's fine. But there's only a few items that you can sync here. And I've actually seen, I've seen one instance where there was only one of these things was here, it was just bookmarks. So the better thing to do is just not do this, just do this later. So the screen we were just on before, you could go in and choose to import. And if you had a bunch of browsers installed, you would see all of them here. Um, you'd have different choices, right? And as you can see, there's a lot more data types here too. So that you're actually getting, if this is important to you, if this is something you want to do, it's actually better to do this after the fact. So you can do this at any time. It's not a big deal. And that's fine. Uh, moving on to the next step here. Uh, this is the infamous uh, one. You know, make help us make Microsoft experiences more useful to you, uh, which is a cute way of saying help them make, uh, help us make your browser more useful to us. Um, strong, strong recommendation uh, to uncheck this box. Do not allow Microsoft to do this. Um, if you click on this, it will go to a privacy uh, statement page. You can see what they're doing. What they're doing is enabling uh, more tracking of you over the internet. And it is, there's just no good reason to ever allow that kind of thing. Strongly recommend not doing that. Um, beyond this, you just get to these final two screens. This is just a really basic uh, appearance uh, type setup. You can pick from a few themes, tab layout, you know, dark light mode, et cetera. Uh, the other tab there is this welcome to Microsoft Edge. Uh, set of pages that's up on the Microsoft website. This is actually kind of a nice rundown of all the photos, or ra rather all the features that are available in Microsoft Edge, and it changes over time as new features are added. So um, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing to kind of step through. It's not, it's not, a, not a problem for sure. Okay, so that's the basics. Um, once you get through that, you're dumped into this uh, new tab experience. And this is kind of tied to a, uh, a feature of, you know, what happens when Edge starts? Um, I believe that the default is actually open the new tab page, which means if you have a bunch of tabs open and you close the browser and come back, you'll just come back to this one page, this one tab, and you'll lose everything. Now, there's a history feature. You can go kind of figure that out. But uh, I think most people will probably want to open the tabs from the previous session. That's what I do on all of my browsers. Um, you may have particular um, pages you want to load, and that's um, but if you choose to use the Microsoft new tab page as this kind of homepage experience, if you will, um, I had to, <laughs> I had to modify this somewhat because the default is so terrible and they've really changed this layout here for all of the features that are available. This is very, quite different than it was, um, even just a few months ago. Um, you can clean this thing up pretty dramatically, turn off that terrible content, which is the same terrible content you get over here in the widgets, um, turn off the sponsored links and just have your own stuff in here. Turn this off entirely if you don't want it. Um, you can uh, determine what's going on in the background. Uh, by default, it's going to load these beautiful uh, Bing uh, background images and optionally videos. Um, you can turn off the spotlight text, which is that text that tells you something about that image and so forth. Um, I, this is actually pretty nice. And, and if you want a fairly kind of minimalist, um, you know, start experience, a home experience, it, it's not too, too bad. Um, I typically actually use a, a third party extension for this. And since we're going to be talking about extensions next anyway, it might be worth just going into the extensions interface and I'll just turn on the thing that I actually use. So it's not too different from what you just saw. Um, this is one called Bonjour, which is the French word with an extra R at the end. Another good option for this is something called Momentum. Uh, both of these things are available in the Microsoft Edge add on uh, store. So you can go in here and uh, search for add-ons and so forth. And you'll, you'll, there's momentum, right? So there's another good option. So kind of a minimalist uh, new tab home experience, if you will. I'll just turn that off. Um, 
before you do anything with Edge, <laughs> strongly, strongly recommend um, bolstering its defenses against uh, tracking and uh, protecting your privacy. Um, I do that with extensions. We're going to get to that one in one second, but I wanted just to show you what they do in the browser because they make a they make a big deal about this. They have a feature called tracking prevention. It's set to balanced of the three types of uh, settings you can have here, and it allegedly brought blocks trackers. And you may have seen if you go to um, BFF uh, cover your tracks page, if you leave this in its default setting, uh, and then run this test where it basically looks at the browser and tries to determine whether or not uh, you can be tracked by the browser maker itself or by third parties. Uh, what you will discover in short order is that uh, this browser does absolutely nothing to prevent you from being tracked. Um, it's taking a little while to come up. So lots of red there, not good. Um, and like I said, I, the, well, before I get to the extensions, I actually strongly recommend extensions, but you could go in here and turn on strict. Um, and this would actually, this would solve some of this, uh, a lot of it actually. Um, the problem is that strict is predicated on a lot of other settings in the browser and in the operating system. And the chances are you're going to make mistakes as you go around and you're going to enable tracking regardless. The other problem is that strict breaks things. Um, I actually think Microsoft does this semi on purpose. And I know this sounds like a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but the idea here is that Microsoft wants to track you on the internet. They, they have an advertising empire that they're, tra they're trying to drive their traffic and you through their advertising network. Um, if they break enough sites with this strict tracking protection by actually blocking everything, you're probably going to go back to balance because the web doesn't work. It's just too complicated. And when you do that, you let the vampire in the door and then everything goes south. Um, rather than go through that, my recommendation is leave this on balance so Microsoft thinks you're good and then go uh, find extensions. I recommend three. Um, Adblock Plus, which is an ad blocker, but uh, it's not just about ad blocking ads, although there's some benefit to that, obviously, but it's also about uh, blocking trackers that are inside ads, right? A lot of ads are graphical images that have like a single pixel that's part of the tracking uh, mechanism. And then I also use Privacy Badger and uBlock Origin. I'm not a big fan of the, the phrase, you can't be safe enough, but I think in the case of Microsoft Edge, it might be true. So I enable all those things. And if we rerun this uh, tediously, this will take a little while, what you'll discover is that you are much better protected um, if it's the case. When you uh, enable extensions, you'll get this little extension menu, and then you can determine uh, if you want any of these to appear on the toolbar, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's give this a second to uh, complete, but now we see some green. It still has a unique fingerprint. That's kind of interesting. Um, this is kind of a minor way that uh, online trackers can still follow you around a little bit, but the good thing is we are blocking ads and invisible trackers, so uh, much better protection than just with the base edge stuff. Um, a lot of people ask about VPNs. Interestingly, um, Microsoft has one built into Edge now. Um, you have to enable it. You can find it through this browser essentials uh, feature. You can also find it actually in settings, but um, if you turn this thing on, um, you can use this as a toggle now. So uh, that will appear, once you've accessed it, it appears in the toolbar by default. And you can kind of just turn it on and off as you go. Um, this isn't a good permanent solution. I mean, VPNs aren't something you should use all the time anyway, but uh, if you want to encrypt your traffic and make sure your ISP or whatever doesn't see what you're doing, um, or you want to spoof your location because you're trying to use Netflix in France or something, um, this is not a horrible solution. It's, um, it works for, I think it's a gigabyte of data every month, and you can't upgrade that. So if you need something more than that, you're going to have to look for a third-party VPN. I recommend honestly checking with the wire cutter, they do a good job with that stuff. But um, I've used ExpressVPN a lot in, in the past, but um, it doesn't. And then I closed the settings, but we should also look at uh, the other safety features that are available in Microsoft Edge, only to basically say, leave them alone. <laughs> you know, um, There's a lot of security stuff going on here. Defender smart screen protecting you against uh, malicious downloads and uh, files and sites and all kinds of other things. So um, honestly, most of this you're probably going to leave alone. If you, I think we're rid of the, the VPN. Yeah, the VPN feature is here. This is Microsoft Edge Secure Network. Um, you can toggle this on here as well, but it's this is set up fairly optimally, I would say. I, I, for the most part, I would say leave this alone. If you're super into the security stuff, um, you can choose a, a third-party DNS and not use your ISP's DNS, but that's a, a fairly complex topic. So this is all well and good if you're going to use Microsoft Edge, but if you've decided 
I'm using Chrome like the rest of the planet, or maybe I want to use Brave or Firefox or whatever browser I like. Why do I care about any of this stuff? Well, the problem is Edge does stuff in the background when you don't use it. And it's actually important, I think, to minimize the impact that Edge has on your system and on you from a privacy perspective. Um, you could actually do some of that from in the browser itself, which is kind of interesting. So if I actually close that like an idiot, but if you go back into um, uh, Edge settings, uh, you'll see this startup boost feature. Um, what this does is it auto runs at login time, an uh, edge process that runs in the background and does some stuff. Um, one of those things is, you know, it preloads like that new tab page. If you use that, there's all this things, these things that happen in the back, but this enables, um, you know, this, this is, this is like Microsoft prepping their tracking engine uh, to be ready for anything you do. So my recommendation is to turn that off. You don't actually have to turn it off in edge. You can just use, so I always go for the task manager, right? Click, you know, for task manager, but actually the more modern interface is in the settings app. And so if you go to apps startup, you'll find Microsoft in that Microsoft edge in that list, turn it off. And now if I go to the task manager version, because this is the way my brain still works, I'm old. Um, you'll see it's not in there, right? Oh, or it is in there, but it's stable. So that's what you want. Uh, if you're not going to use Microsoft edge, right? Um, the other issue of course, is that edge, um, still does things, right? If you bring up copilot, uh, let, actually, let me first, we've done, I think I did this uh, fairly recently in an episode, but if you load something like Chrome, uh, it will often ask you if you want to make it your default browser. It didn't in this case, so I will just go do that. And we talked about this, right? That you can, it does uh, four file and link types. You can set a few others. It's not super important to go down this whole list. Most of these file types or link types don't come up a lot anyway. It's not a big deal. But if you go into uh, the widgets, or which is horrible, or you go into Copilot, or you go into um, search highlights, you click on any of these things, Edge is going to run, right? So I, I think I did. did I, I think I just made Edge my default browser. Oh, I have that. I have, the system has the Edge deflector. So one of the earlier episodes, I uh, installed a utility called MS Edge Redirect. So um, this system is configured to work properly, right? So I've configured. Um, Chrome as my default browser. And now it will use Chrome for those things. But normally that's not the case. So if that bothers you, um, you could either try to deal with it or you could install a third party utility like that one we talked about in a previous episode. So that is an option. So this was pretty dense, um, but there is so much more. I There are probably thousands of options in Edge. If you are going to use Edge, it really behooves you to go through settings and look at all of that stuff. Um, I'm not going to cover all of it, frankly, it's, it's kind of mind boggling, but, uh, in a future episode, we're going to look at some of the, um, the cooler new features that have debuted over the past several months, because this is a really big feature rich application. There's a lot going on here. Um, I will set this back as the default. It has gotten upset with me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot going on. So in the next episode, I think, or in a future episode, we're going to look at some of the, uh, the top new features that you may not know about, um, that are you know, new, brand new or, or fairly new. So uh, that will be coming up soon. I hope you found this uh, interesting and helpful. We'll be back every Thursday with a new episode of Hands On Windows. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to the club. Really appreciate it so much. See you next week.